I'd like to go over the calculations of the pH at the end point of weak acid titrations and also weak base titrations. Now we don't need to go over the pH of a strong acid strong base titration because the pH is always 7 and that's a lot easier. So if we have a weak acid strong base titration the first thing we want to do is to figure out what's the situation that's going on as the titration occurs. Next thing we want to go back and find out how much base we need to neutralize the acid. From there we're going to calculate the moles of the acid that we started with and that's also going to give us the moles of the conjugate base that we form. We'll calculate the concentration of the conjugate base and then we'll just do an ice box in order to figure out the pH. So we'll go through that kind of calculation. You can look at it several times if you need to. Last thing I'd like to do is to do another one from the other way around where we have a weak base titrating with a strong acid. The situation for a titration, especially a titration here of a weak acid going to with a strong base, we start off with all of our acid in solution and so if we just have a solution that's just an acid we can figure out the pH of that weak acid solution by doing an ice box. The next situation that comes up is the buffer area and that's where we have a situation where some of our uh, acid has been turned into its conjugate base. So we have some acid left over, we have some that's turned into the conjugate base, and because those are equal, we're going to get a buffer region, so the pH equals the pKa. But what we're really concerned with for this time here is the pH at the end point. Now we have a weak acid and we have a strong base, so we're not surprised that our pH is greater than 7. So we're expecting to get slightly higher than 7. And this is because all of our acid has been turned into its conjugate base. And more importantly, whatever moles of acid we started with, that's how many moles of our conjugate base we're going to end up with. That's important. Here's a problem. Benzoic acid is a weak monoprotic acid. And I've looked up the Ka and found that it's 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So calculate the pH have the solution at the equivalence point when we do 25 milliliters of our 0.1 molar benzoic acid and titrate that against some sodium hydroxide strong base uh, which is only 0 0.0500 molar. Now this is benzoic acid and benzoic acid you can see has a benzene ring C6H6 except for one of the H's here is actually connected to another carbon and then we have a COOH so this would be R is the rest of the atom and hooked to a C double bond O O H and this H is the H that is acidic and comes off. Well we have this situation where we have our base, strong base and we have our weak acid and the first thing is well how much of the strong base do we really need? So we're going to do that with of Vm equals Vm calculation. Where the volume times the molarity of our acid equals the volume times the molarity of our base. Now our acid and our base are both monoprotic so we don't need to, we can use the concentrations that are given in the problem. So the volume of the acid is 25 milliliters. and the concentration of the acid is 0 0.100 molar. The volume of the base, this is what we're looking for, and the concentration of the base is 0 0.0500 molar. Now we can work out this problem in solve for x, however it's pretty obvious that since the base is half as concentrated as the acid, we're going to need twice as much so when we get done we're going to see that we have 50 milliliters of our base 
will be needed to titrate 25 milliliters of our acid. So that's a useful number. We need to keep track of that. Now while we're here with these numbers, we can do one more thing, and that is if we can find out how many moles of acid we have, that is going to be an important number for us. So here I have the acid, benzoic acid, and we can get moles, we'll call that N, uh, moles is going to be the volume times the molarity of our acid. Now in this case the volume has to be in liters because we want liters to cancel out liters in moles per liter. So 25 milliliters would be 0 0.025 liters. And that's going to be with 0 0.100 moles per liter. And this is of our benzoic acid. So we can see what's going to happen. We're going to have 0 0.0025 moles of our acid. We're going to use that number a little bit later. Now, in these problems, it gets a little confusing because we use several different equations that all look very, very much alike. So what we're saying is we have an acid and this benzoic acid, so C6H5, that's this part, COOH, and that's this portion, will break up to give us H+, plus. that's the little H that comes off, and we're left with C6H5COO-, minus and that would be called the benzoate ion in case that shows up in a problem. Now that's just the acid dissociation equation. The next thing that we have is when we neutralize then we take our acid, we mix it with a base, we get water, and then we get the salt of that weak acid which we know is going to be a conjugate base. So as we neutralize, we change the acid into its conjugate base. Now when we actually get to the um, end point, then what we really want is this equation. This is the equation showing that here we have our conjugate base, which is a good acceptor. It accepts an H off of the water and gives us some OHs in solution and reforms our weak base uh, benzoic acid. So this is what actually makes the solution basic and why the pH is a little bit greater than 7. Here's our equation again, just the four compounds that we really need. And so what we want to do now is we're going to go back and figure out, well, what is this concentration? Now we don't, turns out we don't need uh, the water. We can get rid of that. And these start off as 0. And what we really want to find out is, what is our concentration of hydroxide? Because if we know the hydroxide concentration, we can figure out the pOH and therefore the pH. So, we need this concentration of our benzoate ion. Let's go back a little bit and we can see, well, here we have the concentration of our acid. And we learned before that for all the acid that we have, it all turns into the benzoate ion. So whatever the moles of acid, that's our moles of benzoate ion. Second thing is we saw that we started with 25 milliliters of our acid and we added to that 50 milliliters of our base so now we know our total volume is 75 milliliters or 0 0.075 liters. So with those two bits of information we can figure out the concentration of our benzoate ion zero point zero zero two five moles that's our benzoate ion divided by the total volume which was seventy five milliliters point zero seven five liters and when we calculate that, we see that the concentration is 0, 0.333 3, 3 repeating molar. So that's important because that's going to be our initial value 
in our ice box. So back to our ice box, 0 0.0333 molar. And we, are, uh, we also know our Ka already. I'm sorry, Kb. So uh, this is the base equation. So we can write the Kb expression. Concentration of C6H5COOH times the concentration of OH minus all over the concentration of benzoate ion C6H5COO negative. And we need a number for that. Now we don't have the Kb for benzoate ion. We do, however, have the Ka for benzoic acid. So we know that that's going to be Kw divided by Ka. And let's go back and figure out what that value was. It was way back. 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. That was our Ka. So the value of this is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's the value of Kw divided by 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. And we can calculate that, find out that comes out to be 1.59. And I don't mind having too many significant figures because this is in the middle of a problem. Times 10 to the negative 10. So we have a base equation, making the solution basic, and we have calculated the Kb for that base equation. Now our job is to go back and figure out the OH minus concentration. Now we can see that some of that's going to go away. And we're going to form some of the acid and some of the hydroxide. So the hydroxide will be X. The uh, benzoic acid will be X. And our initial concentration, our benzoate ion, is going to be 0 0.0. 333 minus X. Now, this value here is very, 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 very small compared to our initial value. So we can go through and make the assumption that X is so small that we can basically ignore it. And we would write on our paper, assume that X is much smaller than 0 0.0333 therefore 0 0.0333 minus x is approximately the same as 0 0.0333 and that is going to make our calculation much easier so we know that this value here is x this value is x and this value down here is 0 0.0333. Now I've sort of run out of room. I'm going to uh, erase this page and get myself some more space. And I will go back and fill in a little bit of this information. And that was that this was 0 0.0333 and that we're trying to find this value here. Now, since this is a standard icebox, we could go through and calculate now what our Kb is. It's x squared over 0 0.0333, and that equals 1.59 times 10 to the negative 10. Now, x is our concentration of OH minus, and that comes out to be 2.3 times 10 to the negative 6. When we go back and take the negative log, because we want to get the pOH, that comes out to be 5.637. Our pH equals 14 minus the pOH. 
So that comes out to be 8.36. Now this is our final value, so we do want to go just two significant figures because our <clears throat> numbers that we used to get the uh, KB, the KA value, only had two significant figures. So we have two numbers after the decimal point. So the pH of this titration at the end point is a little bit basic, 8.36. And that's what we said would happen here. So we're not surprised that this is a little bit higher than a pH of 7. Now we can do exactly the same kind of problem, and this time we will work with a weak base. Now the weak base, we can see we have a Kb for ammonia and we're going to titrate that with a strong acid HCl. So we could go back and figure out, well, what is the initial pH of the ammonia solution? And we could do that with a um, icebox problem. Uh, we would get a buffer where the pOH equals the pKb, and so therefore we'd have to subtract from 14 to get our answer. And what we really want to know is what's going to be the pH when we reach our equivalence point. And the equivalence point this time is going to be in the little acidic region because we are working with a strong acid and a weak base. So we expect our pH at the end point to be a little bit acidic. So while we're here, let's do some calculations. We can see that we have 10 milliliters of our base and we don't know how much acid that's going to take. So let's calculate that first. We're going to use volume times molarity equals volume times molarity. And as we do this, we're going to find out that our new volume, since the acid is half as concentrated, we're going to find out that the volume that we need is twice as much. So we're going to be 20 milliliters. Now something else we know we're going to need later is we have 20 milliliters here. We have 10 milliliters of our acid. So we know that our total volume is going to be 30 milliliters. Something else we can do while we're here is we know we're going to be using uh, the equation of our ammonia. That when we mix it with the HCl, we don't care about the Cl because that's a spectator, we get ammonium. And the equation that actually is going to be uh, involved at the equivalence point is ammonium as our conjugate acid will dissociate into H plus and NH3. Now, when we do this problem, we can see we're going to have an ice box again and it's going to be a standard ice box and what we care about is the value here and we're going to care about what is our Ka for this conjugate acid so the Ka is Kw divided by Kb in this case and <clears throat> using 1 times 10 to the negative 14 for Kw and 1.8 times 10 negative 5, then we find out that we get a value of 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10 for our Ka, which is going to be much, much smaller than our initial concentration of the um, ammonium ion. Now, we're going to go over to the next page. In this case, we're going to see, well, where, what concentration did we have to start with? Because we had ammonium. We get ammonia and H+. Plus. And we want this value here. Now, the ammonium we had 
we wanted to calculate how much ammonia we had in the very beginning. So that was uh, the number of moles would be the volume times molarity. The volume we had was a 10 milliliter sample. So we're going to make that a 0 .010 uh, liters times 0.1 molar. I'm getting these values from the page before. And that's going to turn into 0 0.0, I think I made a little mistake. This is a 2. Okay, let's go back. Right, our ammonia was 0 0.02 molar, excuse me. So the number of moles will be 0 0.00200 moles. The concentration of ammonium is 0 0.00200 moles divided by the liters. We had 10 milliliters of our acid, 20 milliliters of our base, so that's 0 0.030 liters, which is 0 0.0667 molar. So this value is 0 0.0667 and this time I'm just going to go ahead and do the shortcut because the shortcut, we can see this is a really standard icebox and our value of our K is much much smaller than our initial concentration so the value of the H plus concentration is equal to x. That's equal to the square root of our initial concentration, 0 0.0667, times our Ka, which is 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. Now we multiply those, we take the square root. Uh, the value of x comes out to be 6.09 times 10 to the negative 6. When I take the pH of that, I get 5.22, which is a little bit acidic, and that is exactly what we expect. Here's a pH of 7 on our graph, and we can see that we're going to end up with something slightly acidic. So this is how we would go through and calculate the pH at the endpoint of an acid, weak acid solution and also of a weak base solution.